let's take a look at an example. So in this problem here, they tell us we have a 0.5 kilogram ball is ejected from the tube at point A with a horizontal velocity V of A is equal to 2 meters per second. They also tell us that the coefficient of restitution at B is E is equal to 0 0.6. So we can see here's our point A up here where the ball is ejected. Here's our V sub A in the horizontal direction of 2 meters per second. And we can see down here at B where it bounces off this sloped plane right here. Now from the diagram, we can also see the slope plane is at an angle of 30 degrees, has a distance r, and then at the top of the triangle here, it goes up straight vertically another 4 meters before we get to point A. So they want us to find the horizontal distance r, or r over here, where the ball strikes the smooth inclined plane. So that's a hint right there that it's a smooth inclined plane. And they also want us to find the speed at which it bounces from the plane. So that's where we're going to need our coefficient of restitution right there. So as far as our plan of attack to solve this problem, we want to use kinematics to find this distance r from projectile motion problem. And we're going to use the collision at b as an oblique impact with the line of impact perpendicular to the plane. So that's going to be important as we do out our trig and geometry there. So the coefficient of restitution applies perpendicular to the incline, and the momentum of the ball is conserved along the incline. Now that we've had the opportunity to read through the problem statement and understand everything they've given us and what they're asking us to solve for, our next step is to create our setup page. So in our setup page, we have all of our given information from the problem statement and given diagram. We know that our mass is given to us as 0.5 kilograms. Our velocity at A is 2 meters per second. Our coefficient of restitution is 0.6. And our angle of our slope is at 30 degrees. So then we redraw our diagram over here. We can see this height over here off the top of the incline. It's 4 meters from there to point A. We have our V sub A here coming off the top of point A. We have our angle of 30 degrees here. We have our point of impact here of the ball at point B. And we have this distance from point A to point B in the horizontal direction of R. The other thing that we want to do here is establish our coordinate system. So you can see here I've chosen this goes to standard Cartesian. X is positive going to the right. Y is positive going up. And we need to keep that spot where we can always reference back to it. We can keep track of our assigned convention, understand what's positive and what's negative relative to this chosen coordinate system. So they want us to find this horizontal distance r, where the ball strikes the smooth inclined plane. And they also want to find the speed at which it bounces up from the plane. So now that we have all that information readily available and we can reference back to it, we can start our solution. So first we're going to treat this as a projectile motion problem with the ball launching from point A. Um, so what we need to decide is where do we want to place our origin? We have our chosen coordinate system over here, positive x to the right, positive y up, but where do we want to set our origin? Well, I'm going to choose to leave my origin right at point A here. This isn't the only option that we could choose to put our origin at point B or any other point. But for me, I like to do this for projectile motion problems. That that's my starting reference at my origin of point A where the ball leaves. So this is saying that my x of 0, I mean my x naught is 0 and my y naught is 0. And we're going to know that our y naught, um, our velocity in the y naught direction here is going to be equal to 0. Because it only has a horizontal component. And we know that our velocity in our x direction initially is given to us as 2 meters per second. So now what I want to do is solve these each separately. Deal with the x direction independently and the y direction independently. So let's just take a look at our x direction here. So we can use a kinematic relationship here. The x is equal to x naught plus our v x naught times time. So our position x is equal to our initial position plus our initial velocity times time. So in our case here, x would be when we plug in. This is our r distance over here. That's the distance we're traveling from point A to point B. And this is equal to our initial x naught, which is where we established our origin, so that's zero right there, plus our velocity in the x direction, which is given to us as 2 meters per second. I can plug that in there times time. So this is our first equation. We'll call that equation 1 right here. So equation 1 has two unknowns and one relationship. So we need to go on to our y direction next, figure out our kinematic relationship there. Well, I'll use this one here. y is equal to y naught plus our vy naught t minus 
0.5 gt squared. So then I can start plugging in for my equation here. So we have our y. So our y is going to be this distance right here. From the bottom plane here where b strikes up to our point right here. So we're going to call that our y distance right there plus, our origin's up here, this distance of 4. So we're going to have a y plus our 4 right here for what we're really concerned about there. So we put that in. There's our 4 plus. Now our y term right here is going to be based off of this trig triangle. So I can do this over here. I can say that the tangent of 30 is equal to my opposite over adjacent. There's my opposite. There's my adjacent there. So this is equal to the tangent of 30 is equal to y over my r. y over my r right there. Solve this for my y. y is equal to r times the tangent of 30. So there's my r times the tangent of 30. So again, this whole distance from right here, from A down to the bottom line there, from where my origin is, is going to be equal to 4 plus R times the tangent of 30. There's my 4 right there. There's my R times the tangent of 30 from my Y component there. This is equal to my Y naught plus velocity in the Y direction initially, which is 0 because that's my origin is my Y naught, and there is no component of velocity in the Y direction, so that is 0 as well. This is now, puts that whole term right there to 0. This is minus 0.5 gt squared right there. Well, I put this in negative 0.5 or 1 half. G is acceleration due to gravity or 9.81 times my t squared there. So I can look at this. Now my unknowns between equation 1 and equation 2 are an r and a t, an r and a t, two equations, two unknowns. We can now solve these two equations simultaneously to figure out what our r and our t values are. So I rewrite out equation 1 right here, simplify it down, equation 1 is r is equal to 2t. I can plug this into my second equation for r, so now I plug it into my equation number 2 for my r right there, I have a negative 4 plus 2t from my equation 1 times the tangent of 30 is equal to 1 half 9.8t squared. So my only unknown in this is my t values here. So a t and a t squared there. I can solve this equation. You can solve it by hand, MATLAB, Excel, Python, whatever your numerical solver preferences. t will end up being 1.028 seconds. Now from that there, I can plug this back into equation 1 up here in order to solve for r. So that's what I do. r is equal to 2 times that time value there. And when I solve that out, my r is then equal to 2.06 meters. So that's the first part of the problem that they asked us to solve for. The second part of the problem, they want us to calculate the velocity of the ball just before impact. So now what we can do here is we can use our kinematic relationship here. We can say, okay, our Vx is equal to Vx naught is equal to 2 meters per second when we start out. So from there, what we can do is do the same thing for our y. Our Vy is equal to Vy naught minus Gt. And I can start plugging in there now because I have a value for time. So my velocity in the y direction is equal to my initial velocity in the y direction, which was zero because they only had a horizontal component when we started off and we launched the ball, minus our acceleration due to gravity, 9.81, times our time. So this right here will then give us our velocity in the y component. So with that, we have our velocity in the y component and we have our velocity in the x component. So we can put those together and we get the magnitude by taking the square root of the sum of the squares. So v is equal to our, our vy squared plus our vx squared square root. We do that there, plug in our values, we end up with v is equal to 10.28 meters per second for the magnitude of our velocity. Now, we have our y component here and we have our magnitude here. What we really want to do is give a magnitude and a direction if we're not giving it in vector form here. So I do add a little bit of trig, and I did this out uh, by hand here and drew it out in PowerPoint, so it's a little bit easier for you guys to see here for how we do the trig out. It's a great problem to reference back to as well. So what we're looking at here is we have this angle here, our thi. So this is an opposite interior angle. So this same angle up here is also going to be thi. We know that we have our magnitude over here of our velocity, which we just solved for by the square root of the sum of squares of 10.285 meters per second. And we have our y component of our velocity over here of 10.0866 meters per second there. And what we want to do is figure out what is this angle phi here. So we can say, okay, for angle phi, 
we have our trig rule here. The sine of the is equal to opposite over hypotenuse. So there's my opposite over my hypotenuse, my y component over my magnitude right there. Take the inverse sine, and we can calculate phi. So the inverse sine of 10.0886 divided by 10.285 will give us our value for phi. We do out that calculation. Our phi value here is 78.8 degrees, which is this angle here and this angle here because these are opposite interior angles. So we have the magnitude of 10.285 and our angle of 78.8 degrees. So with that information, now we can solve the impact problem by using our x and y planes to find along perpendicular to the line of impact. Because that's what we're asked for in the problem statement there. So we have to figure out perpendicular to our line of impact here. So we have this V sub A coming in at this angle here, and we know that this is 30 degrees, and we know this whole angle here is now calculated out to be 78.8 degrees. So therefore, 78.8 minus 30 will give us this angle here between where the ball comes in at A and the angle of the plane, and this is a 48.8 degrees here. So we know this comes off at 90 degrees over here. This would be our VA2 over here. So what we're going to do is we're going to reference this and say our ball we're going to call A and our plane we're going to call object B. So now we need to do out just a little bit more trig here in order to calculate our components here. So what we want to do is figure out our X component right here. So we do that there and we say the sine of 48.8 degrees is equal to our X value over VA1 right there. So now we're dealing with that triangle there. We do that there, we can solve for our X. So VA1 times the sine of 48.8 degrees is going to give us our X value there. Now for our Y value here, our Y value is going to be the cosine of 48.8 degrees is equal to Y over VA1. We'll take a look at all of our trig and geometry over here. So y, when we solve for y, is equal to VA1 times the cosine of 48.8 degrees. Now again, our x here that we're talking about, this is our line of impact. So now we've broken things down in terms of all of our angles. Now we can see why it was important that we solve for the 78.8 degrees. Again, we're referencing everything off of this bottom horizontal plane right here with our standard xy that we chose at the beginning here. So again, this 30 degrees here, this 78 degrees here, and this 48.8 degrees here, we'd all solve for. So now we know all of our trig and geometry here, and we've broken down our x and our y values based upon that angle. So with that there, we can now jump into our momentum equations. So our momentum is going to be conserved in the y direction here. So m1 v1 equals m2 v2. So for our particular problem here, ma, which again, we have our A and our B for the ball and the plane. So MA times our negative VAY1 is equal to MA times our negative VAY2 here. So what we're going to look at first thing is our masses are going to cancel out. So on either side of this equation, our M sub A is going to go away. So we have now our VA2 is equal to our VA1. And now we have a relationship up here now with our VA1 times the cosine of our... <clears throat> 48.8 is our VAY2 from this relationship right there. So now the next thing that we want to do is solve for VA2 here by plugging this in. We plug this in, our VAY2 is equal to negative 6.77 meters per second. So this is the velocity in the Y direction after impact. So the y component of velocity for the ball, which is a that we've called here, is negative before and after impact based on this coordinate system here. So the next part of this problem is to take a look at our coefficient of restitution equation and apply it in the end or the x direction here. So that's the next process here. So recall that we're calling our ramp object B. This does not move. Only our ball A is moving. So if our ramp B does not move, that'll simplify some equations down. We can say that, okay, VBX1 is equal to VBX2 is equal to zero. The velocity of the ramp in the X direction initially in the, is equal to the velocity of the ramp in the X direction after impact, and that's still equal zero because it's not moving either one of those. So now we can use our coefficient of restitution equation right here 
So we can say, okay, our VBX2 is the velocity of the ramp, that's zero, minus our VAX2, our velocity of the ball after impact, divided by our VAX1, the velocity of the ball right before impact in the X direction, minus, again, the velocity of our ramp, which is zero uh, before impact there. So both of those terms go to zero. We're left with a simplified version over here. We have our VAX2 on the top, and this is equal to our 0.6 for our coefficient of restitution. And then we have our equation for our VAX1, which we recall from the beginning part of the problem there, we came from this relationship in this equation over here, because our X was equal to VA1 times the sine of 48.8 degrees. Solve it for our VAX1 is equal to VA1 times the sine of 48.8 degrees right there. So we can plug in our value for our VA1 right there, which is negative 10.285 from the first part of the problem, times the sine of our 48.8 degrees there. So that's what we plugged in right here into our coefficient of restitution equation. Now from this here, our only unknown is this VAX2. So we can solve that, rearrange that relationship there from our coefficient of restitution equation and solve for our VAX2. When we do that, we see that our VAX2 is equal to negative 10.285 times the sine of 48.8. We plug that in, our VAX2 is equal to 4.64 in meters per second there. So then again, same thing we did earlier in our solution, we can solve for our magnitude, but now for our VA2. So this is our VA2 in the x direction, VA2 in the y direction, square root of the sum of the squares of the x and y components. We do that out there, we end up with VA2 is equal to the square root of 4.64 squared plus 6.77 squared, our x component and our y component there. We take the square root of that and we end up with our magnitude of VA2 of 8.21 meters per second.